Hi there, Greg Holmeson, Philippines Recruitment Company. And this is the first of a series of videos where we dive deep into the process of recruiting out of the Philippines. We're gonna cover off absolutely everything, especially when it comes to the effect that COVID has had on our process, what it means for the trade skills assessment, and how in fact, the quality of candidates coming through the Philippines now will have improved significantly for our clients in Australia, purely because of the way we now need to attract and process people out of the Philippines. So we'll dive into that. What we're going to start with today though, is how we source our candidates. So we have a following in the Philippines of about 80,000 people on our um, digital media page. Now this is one amazing source of quality candidates for us, but there's also a couple of job boards. But the thing to remember here is that there's 100 million Filipinos up there and they all want to come to Australia and they will all put their hand up and say they can. So we've got to um, filter those people out very carefully. Uh, very recently we actually advertised for a particular type of candidate. We had almost 1,000 applicants that we went through to only discover that one person was actually qualified as per the criteria that we were looking for. So what we've done is now we've introduced bots. So we advertise for the position, we make it very clear what it is that we're looking for. The bots actually come into play and ask a series of questions to actually filter down the candidates before they will then apply for the actual position. And once we get to that, we get a much smaller core group of people for our talent to then go through and start assessing. So we then have a first pass through, we look at the criteria around what the client's looking for, we confirm that the candidates do indeed have the skill set that our clients need, then we send in a head recruiter to actually have the first conversation with the candidates. From there, if all the boxes are ticked, we'll then get the candidate to sit an English test. Now, this is something that we pay for, for two reasons, right? We, we need to make sure that the communication skills for the candidate are good enough for the environment in Australia. So whether that's workshop or field service or whatever it might be, we need to ensure that for a start. But secondly, and almost more importantly now, it's to do with the trade skills assessment that the Australian government insists the Filipinos pass. So it's a Cert 3. Now, once upon a time, the RTO, the Registered Training Organisation, would fly to the Philippines and conduct the assessment themselves in person. So it was pretty much a practical assessment. So a welder could actually show how they weld. Um, the mechanics would go through a workshop environment where they could demonstrate their skills. But now it's all done over the internet. So on a video interview, the candidate now needs to prove and show to the assessor sitting back in Australia that they have the skills. So that requires a lot more theory than what they may have normally had to show and most of them have all been to TAFE, so we revisit that. We actually have our own trainer and assessor as well to help them get through that process. But I'll go into that in a bit more detail later, but that's a big part of why our candidates need to sit the English test, because they need to be able to speak English and, conf and confirm the skill set they've got for their trade skills assessor back in Australia. So that's the next part of that process. And from there, the people that have ticked all the boxes, we then need to profile them for our clients in Australia to view. So once we've done that, we make sure that the CVs are accurate and correct, and we will then upload all of those details onto an online portal for our clients to then view. So they will then log in, they'll be able to view the candidates that we've put forward, that our team have put forward, and from there they can make comments, they can share them amongst themselves, they can then recommend these candidates for either further assessment or a, a, another interview. So that's the first stage of what we go through 
in profiling the candidates and getting them prepared for a more detailed interview with our clients. So that's stage one of our process. That's a wrap for today. Please shoot back any questions that you've got on this or in, in fact anything more for me. Um, look out for stage two where we go into what the assessment might look like with a client and what happens after that for us then conducting a practical assessment in the Philippines for our clients to see. My name's Greg Holmeson, Philippines Recruitment Company. Thanks very much for listening.